Hello, I'm Chris, this is Gross Models, and welcome to issue one of the Batmobile Tumblr uh, from the Dark Knight trilogy. Now, this is a uh, one-eighth scale uh, with die-cast parts, a, a huge car. It's the it's the tank. It's the stealth tank Batmobile thing. I do like it. I know a lot of people are not impressed with it, but I like it. I, I think it looks much nicer and more Batman-esque than the, the traditional, you know, 60s car. But uh, yeah, we'll have a look through the magazine and see what's what. Um, the part work obviously comes on a huge uh, cardboard backing for the first issue, uh, telling you all about what's going to be happening, uh, incredible features, what's going to be happening, how to subscribe. Uh, it's got lights and sounds and things, uh, still designed, the fins at the back are powered. And uh, yeah, it looks quite nice. Um, it's not a cheap one. Uh, there's 120 issues and it's going to be say £11 per issue basically after the first introductory course but um, yeah I'm, I'm still considering it so at the moment I've picked up part one because it's cheap and I like to do the first part a lot of the part work so uh, we'll see what's what um, let's have a look through the magazine and the other stuff that you get with it uh, initially obviously this is the first uh, look at the build type uh, mag uh, we've got the tumbler obviously there one eighth scale a couple of different views of it 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 just looks nice. It looks it looks stealth and nasty, but uh, yeah, quite like it. Uh, Gold wing doors open and close, cockpit with a control panel, uh, stealth design and all that. So that is that. The world of Batman. Um, the magazine's got instructions, obviously, stuff about the different Batmobiles by the looks of it, uh, and the history of Batman. Uh, when you subscribe, I think you can get it from news agents. Actually, I know you can get it from news agents because one of the other little bits of paper in here which I can't find at the moment, uh, did say about, uh, you know, if you hand this in at your news agent sort of thing. But if you subscribe, you'll get one free issue. Uh, you'll get a key ring. The first binder, generally. Uh, a mug. Uh, and a diecast, 143 scale diecast version of the same thing, which is quite cool to have. Uh, so that's that. Uh, let's have a look. We also get, what do we get here? Uh, the subscription offer. Issue two and receive issue three for free and free gifts. So issue two is the first wheel and then continuing the, the cockpit canopy by that looks a bit more of the free stuff, more of the free stuff, how to subscribe, send that off to them or do it online or phone them. Uh, there is a premium subscription, which is one pound 50 per issue. So an extra 200 quid basically. Um, for an acrylic case, which looks like it's got lights on it as well, which is quite nice. Um, if it was just the stand, it wouldn't be so good, but having the, the lit base around it is a little bit nicer, but I don't think I'd bother with doing that. Seems like an extra chunk. Uh, so there we go, that's that. <coughs> even a scan me, if you want to scan that, then you can do the subscription thing without even typing anything in. Uh, so let me bring in my bench so I can show you the magazine properly and then we'll show you the parts before I get to the parts. Look, there we go. This is the big box that's come stuck to the front of the, uh, the magazine. Uh, I'll open it up before I do the actual building. Not a very nice screwdriver, but it does the job. Unless you've got screwdrivers of your own, obviously, anyway. I like the plaque. That's quite nice. So we'll have a closer look at that in just a minute. But we'll have a look through the magazine first. So here we have issue one. Uh, a couple of collaboration, obviously, with Hachette, who are publishing it. DC, who own Batman. Or at least the rest of this particular part of Batman. Uh, so, there we go. Uh, so, the Tumblr. Got to start with the Tumblr, obviously. Uh, it's called the Tumblr. It appeared in 2005 in Batman Begins. Uh, it did also appear in, obviously, the other two. The Dark Knight trilogy. Uh, and a comic of the Batman film and video game. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so, yes, originally... It's an army version, it's in camo, but it come in black. It, and, and indeed, and that's what it looks like when it's done in black. Uh, bits from a stealth bomber, a comfort of a Lamborghini, parts of a Hummer, different things put together. It's quite nice, I like it. Uh, maximum top speed in the movies, uh, 260 kilometers an hour, but actually it does 140, which is still pretty quick for something that looks like that. So yeah, there we go, uh, 5.7 liter engine, a jet engine at the rear. Yeah, that's going to go through petrol quite quickly. Uh, Batman's history, looking at the films, obviously the Christopher Nolan trilogy. There we go. Uh, after Batman and Robin in 97, it took some time to relaunch. I wonder why. 
go. So that's that. Uh, the Dark Knight. The Dark Knight Rises. Uh, oh, Batman Begins was the first one, wasn't it? Yeah. Then the Dark Knight. Then the Dark Knight Rises. Yeah. There we go. Uh, so looking at the films, looking at the comics as well. Um, who is Batman? That's the real question. It's Wade, isn't it? There we go. But yeah, that's it. Detective Comics is where he appeared. I'm sure they'll be going through that in more de detail and depth as the magazines progress through 120 magazines. Uh, here's Red Batman. There we go, in case you don't know who he is. Uh, so, the instructions, I shall have a look through. Looks like there's a combination of pushing together and screwing things together. Cannons. Canopy. There we go. I shall get to that. And we'll see what that looks like, obviously coming soon. The front wheel. So, let's get the parts together and we'll get this built. So, let's have a look at what is supplied in this first issue. We've got the nameplate, which is uh, aluminium by the feel of it. Uh, quite nice. It's just a bit, bit of paper, but that's going to go up there like that and stand and give you a nice little uh, display um, icon, logo. That's quite cool. Uh, the main piece, obviously, is the cockpit assembly, which is metal. Uh, it's quite nice. It's painted, obviously, black. And, yeah, it's got holes in it for things to be fitted. I'm sure we'll get to that momentarily. Some detail on there. Not lots, but I don't think there's lots on the actual thing itself anyway. Uh, what have we got in here? We've got a bag with one shiny part in it. Well, that's in a bag and the others aren't. I don't know, but that's a shiny plastic bit. Uh, we've got a couple of other shiny plastic bits. Put them all together over there. Uh, we've got a couple of screws labelled CM. Three of those, so probably two to use, one for spare. Uh, in another bag here, we've got some self-adhesive pads and little teeth type things. Look the same, and that bit I've got no idea what that bit's for. Uh, we've got a couple of bits that are obviously chiral. We've got L and R, which obviously I put the wrong way around. R on there, and that's got an L on there, so that'll be R. Uh, these don't matter. We've got L and R for these, as it says to make sure you get them the right way around. Uh, we've got to fit the gun into that. It's just a push fit. No glue is required. That's a nice, quite tight fit there, actually. I'm quite happy with that. That's quite good. Uh, let me turn the page over in the instruction manual. And see, it just says about doing one of them, but basically you've got to do the same on the other one as well. That one as well as this. Right way round helps. There you go. Uh, so it says take the two curved panels, these bits, and fit them into there. All right. So this is the R side. So we'll fit this onto the R side. Uh, left. Yeah. This is the right side. That's fitting internally there. Okay. That gives a nice internal shaping bit like that. Uh, it just says fasten it inside. It doesn't really fasten inside. Sort of bits. Take pieces on the back there. Not sure what they're for yet. Oh, yeah. Take the small cannon and attach that on the outside. That's probably going to be Holds it all in place. Again, they just pop through there. Like that. Not attached yet. Yeah, there's some movement there, but I'm not sure. So that's that. Uh, repeat the steps on the other side, yes, of course. Put that there and pop that. in there as well. Okay. Yeah, again, it's not, you know, 
attached. Just held in place a little bit. There better be some other way of holding that in place. Have a look. Ah, oh, there is. This is what we're going to have to do now. Uh, repeat that photo shows. Yep, so that's that. Turn this over. And then we get to fit this bit. This has got the slots that hold those in there. Right way round. That's going. There, like that. Those two slots fit into those two slots. Even without the screws in it, that's now holding that in place fairly securely, actually. I need to wiggle that a little bit to get it in just the right place, but I'm okay with that. Uh, fix it in place with two CM screws. I shall do that immediately. Keep one CM screw for later. Let's try the screwdriver that they provide us with. It's not great, but it doesn't need to be, especially for a couple of little things like this. Get one in a little bit and get another one in. Well, you make sure that it lines up before you go back and tighten them up. There we go. One and that one. So that's now fairly secure in there, and they are fairly secure on the outside of that as well. Yeah, that's one way of doing it. Not the way I would have necessarily chosen myself, but there we go. Uh, now we've got this one to put on the right side again. Uh, no, not that. Not that at all. One of these. So these marks R and L as well. They're not, but they are fairly unique shape. So that's obviously going to be this side. Uh, you've just got, again, two pins. Pop through the holes there. And this is a shiny piece, so I will need to come back and get rid of my fingerprints from it. But that does that. It's okay. Again, it's not overly secure, but there's extra pieces that are going to fit over the top of this as well. Uh, so let's attach this one over the other side as well. Quite lined up with that one. Oh, that's better. Oh, it popped out again. It was almost there, but it wasn't quite. It, that's definitely in that time. No, nope. yes, it's in. I'm not entirely certain that this is the best way of attaching these. Uh, there are some pieces that are going to go over the top of it, so I'm not, not worried yet. Give them the benefit of the doubt. I'm sure they know what they're doing, so let's carefully make sure that stays in place for the time being. Uh, we've got the first bit. It takes two strips of double-sided tape at indicated points on the front. So they go on the top and the bottom there. The top and the middle, shall we say. They give us quite a few of these. So then, I don't know if we're going to be using them all at the moment, or if they are, again, kept for later. So we put one up there. And one on there. And, I mean, how do I feel about double-sided tape being used as an assembly thing? It's all right. I'd, I'd rather not. I mean, I'd say screws and things are better. The problem with tape is you can't get it back apart again, generally. Uh, if you need to separate it to do it again, you'll have trouble. Um, right, so we've got this to go on the front there. Now it says, uh, pay attention to the slanted holes. They must be oriented as shown in the picture. These holes are actually, on the whole thing, it's got a, a chamfer to it there, which you can just about see there. So that's going to have to go that way up. That goes into the base there. The holes then line up in there, by the looks of it, I think. Should be it. Uh, no, we are indeed going to be using more double-sided tape. These are fitting through those holes. So before I do that, let's make sure I've got everything the right way around. 
those holes are lining up there. So that's going to go in there like that again. More tape. No, they don't give you any spare bits of tape because we're going to be using these. Yeah. So yeah, just enough tape. Be careful. I mean, it's it's normal double sided 3M tape, so it's not a difficult thing to source if you do need to. If you mess them up or lose it or mess, you know, do anything wrong, you can always get yourself some more. But again, it'd be nicer if they actually provided you with at least one spare piece. People are going to make mistakes. Not me, of course, I never make mistakes, but other people potentially may make errors. That is now in there. That's all lined up and holding together nicely. Uh, then we've got these to put on as well. These are the bits that are going to make sure that the windows hold in place. So this is the R side, which is this side. That going on there, it's going up, and that's covering the back bit. Let's do the side that they're showing in the picture. Get it the right way around that they've got shown in the picture. That's there, and then that's going up there. And over the front. Can't quite tell. Last picture shows it. Goes at the middle and across the bottom there. So that ends up like that. So we've got two little pins here which are going into there. Line that up properly. Pin there, pin there, and pin down the bottom there. And that will hold that window in nice and securely as well. So that's okay. I'm happy with that. Again, push fit rather than screws. But quite tight these pieces anyway. So that should be all right. Have that again, get that down, get that down. And that is now holding that window in quite securely. So I'm happy enough with that. Uh, let's see, the last bit to do is to fit these pistons, uh, which don't have a left and a right in them, but you do have to get them the right way up. We've got one going into there, and one going into the first of those holes down there. The others will obviously be used for something else another time. there and then that's not quite lining up with there got it wrong somewhere along the line already no i don't think i have i think it's just a no, it's not quite right let's try the other one i'm going in the wrong place yes i'm going in the wrong place it's not not that first hole at all it's the hole on the bracket itself Never force anything. If it feels like it's not right, double check. Make sure you're getting it right. Because you might not. That's, again, quite a tight fit in there. I shall have a closer look at that in a moment and make sure it is what it should be. That is basically stage one completed tidying it up and making sure these are in there properly. I think it really is just the case of pushing a little bit harder on that one. Might be that the hole is not quite right or the post is not quite right, but we'll do it. So one spare screw left over, some rubbish to get rid of. Uh, and that is that that is completed we've we've done stage one of the new tumbler it's quite nice uh the shiny bits will need a little bit of cleaning up but that's okay it looks all right um the guns are in fact drilled out so they you know you could weather them or add a little bit of uh metallic Eat bloom or something to them if you want to make it look a little bit more personable, which I might if I'm going to continue with the build. So uh, that's that. Um, there we go. That's part one of the Batman Bill Tumblr. 
Uh, let me know in the comments if you think it's one that I should continue with or not, or you know, any thoughts or observations, always welcome. Thank you very much. I shall see you soon for other part works, maybe some more of this one. I might pick up the wheel anyway, because it's nice to have a 1.8 scale wheel that I can compare to the other 1.8 scale cars that I'm building. As you can't really tell from that being a unique sort of thing, but yeah, let me know what you think in the comments and I shall see you very shortly for other things. Thanks for watching. Bye bye for now. Oh,